we are going to cover chapter 5 in the Cisco book. This chapter is on Ethernet. And there's a number of items covered in the chapter for you and that we're going to talk about these different ones. Protocol, and I'm going to go through covering these items as we go. Uh, the Ethernet protocol is what we're covering in this chapter. Um, it's gone from being relatively slow to moving on up in speed. It's moved, changed over time, and that we're working with it. Um, we're working with both the logical link control layer and the MAC sublayers with Ethernet. And with the MAC, that we're going to have MAC addresses and that we're going to have frames on the MAC layer. And we're going to be working with MAC addresses. With the MAC addresses, the, um, the media access control, that you have an address on there that is six hexadecimal characters long. The first three hexadecimal characters are going to be an identifier that tells you who's the manufacturer of your network interface that you've got there. So there is a MAC address assigned at time of manufacture to every network device. Um, the first three bytes are going to be the organizational unique identifier, which is a number that identifies what company made it and that's assigned to them. And then the last three MAC addresses are assigned by the organization that made it. So that's a unique identifier they assign. Um, you can actually go to the FCC site and look up your MAC addresses and it will tell you who manufactured your um, network connection there, your NIC on it. And so you can use those to look it up. The only organizational unique identifier that I could tell you what is based on the number is that 00C was the first one as, that was assigned to Cisco, but Cisco used up those numbers long ago and has got other numbers that they use now. Um, the other one is that you have CSMACD and CSMACA. CSMACD is CSM is collision detection. CSM C, CSMA is where you've got a system on how you put on there. CSMA, CSMA stands for Carrier Sense Multiple Access, and that's what Ethernet's going to be using. But others are going to you've got the different systems use the different ones. But carrier sense is checking to see what's happening on your whatever the wiring system you're using and that it allows for multiple access to it. Now there's collision detection and collision avoidance. Collision avoidance is used by wireless networking normally. Collision detection is actually used by most of your other local area networks. Um, so that you're going to normally be using collision detection in a lot of things. Um, collision avoidance, but collision detection says that um, we're sending out a signal, we look and see is the line clear, and then we proceed to send the signal and it gets sent. Now, what this says is, is that you just look to see is there a signal going by where you're sending from, and if it's clear right there, you proceed to send. That doesn't mean that it's a completely clear trail from here to the other end. To use it in a real world situation as an example, with collision detection would be like if we all went out to the parking lot, got in our cars, looked behind us to see is there a car behind us, and if there's not, we put it in reverse, back up, and proceed to go. And don't worry about any traffic lights, stop signs, etc. from there to the house, and that we drive straight on home. Now obviously, as we cross into the highways, even as we back on up, if we just looked straight behind us to see if there was a car behind us, 
when you then put it in reverse and start backing, you may well hit a car that wasn't right behind you when you put it in looked to see. But you need to look both sides also. Collision detection, you don't look to see both sides. Um, but what happens is, is that if a collision occurs, signal gets sent out across the whole network by the first device catching that a collision occurred. And fragments are out there, and that's how it notices a collision occurred. And says, everybody stop. And then at that point, it's a random amount of time, and you check again to see is it clear, and proceed to resend. Um, and that hopefully it goes through on that one. And that, that was the way it's done traditionally with Ethernet. Collision avoidance says that um, we send a signal first to say we want to send a signal and make sure that it's clear, and then we send a signal. With collision avoidance, you should not ever have any collisions on there. Collision detection, with CD, you're trying to keep the number of collisions down to a minimum, but you're not going to eliminate all collisions. Now that we have moved into full duplex in a lot of cases, with full duplex, you shouldn't have collisions really occurring, even with collision detection. But with half duplex, you will have collisions occur. Your object is to keep the number of collisions base down minimal. Um, you are working with frames because we are on the um, layer of working with frames as our packet data unit and that we are going to have that. Uh, Ethernet dates back to 1973. Robert Metcalf, who was with Xerox at that time, came up with it. He's done a lot of other stuff since and that now we've even got speed of Ethernet all the way up to where it'll work on um, up to 10 gigabit, and that they'll work on faster ways than that. But you are working with frames. Um, there are minimum sizes on that, and that there's you're going to have a source address, MAC address on it, and a destination MAC address, which is the next device we're going to as we're traveling across the internet, and the device, the source is the one that we started from at this point. Um, we are using 802.3 is the protocol standard from IEEE for Ethernet um, and that we're going to work with that on that. Um, but the MAC address is the um, physical address that is on our device. It is represented in hexadecimal Hexadecimal is a number system out there that has 16 single digit numbers in it, 0 through F, 0 through 9, and then you have A through F as your other single digit numbers in hexadecimal. Um, so, in that, they show you very briefly about how to do conversions between decimal and hexadecimal. I've got a video out there showing you with more information on that one, so I'll let you go watch those to see on that one. Um, MAC addresses are represented in the format of four hexadecimal numbers, period. Um, four hexadecimal numbers, period, four hexadecimal numbers. And, but it, each of them ranges from zero through F. Unicast addresses are ones that go to a specific machine. There are multicast ones. Um, although you're going to see that more when we get to the network layer and less in terms of this one. The logical addresses are going to be on the network layer with the IP addresses. Um, and they talk a little bit about on that one, but we'll be talking about the IP addresses more on the next one. ARP, Address Resolution Protocol, will allow you to take a MAC address an IP address and return the MAC address for that IP address. And you have ARP tables that keep up with that information also. So it resolves, it resolves your IP address to a MAC address. And that ARP does that. There is also RARP, R A R P, reverse ARP, where you can type in a MAC address and find out what the IP address is associated with that one. And they show you some on how 
artworks. Um, half duplex versus dual duplex. Half duplex says that we're using one wire to send two directions at one time. Um, but we only send one or the other. We can only send or receive at one point, but we can't send and receive at the same point. Walkie-talkies or two-way radios are examples of half duplex. If you've used a walkie-talkie in the past as a kid or that you've worked with two-way radios, like ham radios and stuff, only one per or CD radio, one person can talk, but the other one can't talk at the other end. They can only listen. And so you can either listen or you can talk at any given point, but you can do both. Um, full duplex says we can both send and receive at the same time. Telephone is a good example of full duplex. You can talk to somebody on the other end. Both of y'all can talk and both of you can listen at the same time. So you can get an argument and yell at the other one and they hear you yelling at them. And they can yell back at you or you all can talk back and forth. So you can work in full duplex with the telephone. It's going to work that way. <coughs> um, connections today generally are going to use full duplex on your Ethernet when you're going from faster 100 megabits per second or faster that, um, when you get to the 1,000. Um, megabits per second, you have to use full duplex. With 100, you can go fast, either go full or half duplex. Full duplex is going to work a little bit faster. The auto MDIX is mentioned when you're working with the routers and such. That um, that you can actually plug into them and it will determine which type of cable you've got there automatically so that you don't have to use figure out whether to use straight through a crossover cable, it'll look at it and set it to go the correct way on it. Um, they mention about a couple of switching methods of store and forward switching and cut through switching. With store and forward switching, it stores the entire frame when it receives it on the switch or on the switch and then it sends it on once it's received the entire frame. Um, cut through switching says that it looks at it, sees the first part of it, see where it goes next and starts forwarding it immediately. Now the problem with cut through switching is that you could have damaged frames arrive and that you forwarded them on. Um, with the store and forward um, damaged frames will get dropped along the way. CRC is just a method to determine whether you've got a damaged frame or not. And uh, it looks at it, it does a check on it, and looks at the, does a calculation on the frame, and comes up with a number and compares it to the number that was stored in the frame by the sending unit, and sees did they come up with both the same magic number on it. If they did, it assumes it's correct. If they didn't, then it assumes that there's been an error occurred in the process somewhere. And let me see what items I may have skipped on the list of terms at the beginning of the chapter again for you. The pack Protocol data unit we're talking about is frames on this layer. Um, we talked about CSMACD and CSMCA. The OUI, the Organizational Unique Identifier, we mentioned about that. That tells you who made your network interface. A collision fragment or a runt frame tends to be the same thing. A runt frame is a frame that has gotten broken and is sitting there as just a partial frame sending across. A collision fragment is when two um, frames collide it, that you have collision fragments then, just like if we collided two cars together, pieces of metal and glass fly, well those are collision fragments. The same thing happens when frames collide into each other on the network, that then you have little pieces of frames floating out there which are collision fragments, which is the way that your NICs then can identify that a collision has occurred. Virtual local area networks or VLANs are where we can set up networks on networks and they become more secure. 
and we're not really going into how to set them up in this course but what you need to be just aware of is that VLANs are where you've got a network set up within a network and it's a virtual network and so you can secure your traffic within there to go between the places. Hexadecimal, we mentioned that, base 16 number system. Binary, you've seen mentioned before, which is base 2 number system. And decimal is the number system you've grown up knowing, which is the base 10 number system that only has 10 single digits. And that they mention those all to you. Um, half duplex, full duplex, we talked about them. And then there is power possible with the newest equipment. You can actually send power over Ethernet as a way to power devices at other locations without them having to be plugged in and that you can actually work with this. Um, so you've got some other alternatives and you can actually send your Ethernet across the electrical systems also. So there's a good bit of information in this chapter. It's a little bit different information for you than you've seen in some other chapters. But as you have questions, if you have questions on it, send me messages and ask me questions on it. And then hopefully that you'll get on through it and understand better what's going on with this. In chapter 6, we're going to actually get into IP addressing and we'll look at IP version 4 and IP version 6 and get into some other different things.